I've been doing a bit of reorganization in my workshop recently and I used to keep my sander and sandpaper on that wall over there but I wanted to try and find a space for it right here in the center of the workshop because that's where the power and dust extraction is mounted on this pillar and as it's a tool that I use on basically every project that I do it makes sense to have it right here where I use it. In my last video I made this workbench that sits right next to the pillar and I wanted to see if I could make a new sanding cabinet to fit inside this panel here on the side. After taking some measurements and drawing up a quick plan, more by luck than judgment, it looked like I'd be able to fit everything in there nicely, so that's what I'm going to build today. Plans for this build will be available for free if you'd like to have a go at building one of these. You'll find a link in the description box below. You'll just need some 12mm sheet material to make it and some tools of course. Personally though, I won't be using 12mm sheet material because I wanted to take the opportunity to use up some small sheet material offcuts. First I pulled out some 9mm MDF which I'm going to use for all the horizontal pieces of the cabinet and also for the section dividers and the first job was to rip it to what will be the depth of the cabinet at the table saw. Then I found a small piece of 9mm plywood to use for the vertical side panels and with the table saw still set up I can rip that to the same width. I offered up the side panels and they were almost the perfect length already but I just needed to trim a few millimetres off the end at the mitre saw. To mark up the shelves for length I just held up both side panels to the inside of the area where it will be installed later and then I can mark up the length that the MDF shelves will need to be. I set up a stop block and cut those to length. And using the offcuts, I can then cut the section dividers. And then it was onto assembly. I'm just using PVA wood glue and a clamp to hold things in position. You'll see I'm using the section dividers as spacers to get the spacing correct, and then I can install the spacers to the middle. And I fired in some brad nails through the sides to help hold everything in place until the glue dries. These shelves in the middle don't need to be as high as the ones at the top so I'm using some narrower scrap pieces of ply to space those shelves apart and then the bottom shelves go in and then I can get clamps on the rest. I cleaned up the glue squeeze out with a damp cloth and then I sanded the front and eased over the sharp edges. I can then check the fit and it's perfect. And I can secure it to the frame of my workbench with screws. I needed to use an extension bit here to get the screws in at the top where access was a bit more tricky. And then I can write on all of the usual grits that I use and load it up. I have sections for 40, 60, 80, 120 and 240 grit sanding discs here plus one other section which I'm going to use for scraps of sandpaper that I've used but they still have some life left in them. Yes, I'm that cheap. And these shelves here are for half sheets of wet and dry paper. The grits I use most frequently here are 240, 400 and 600 grit and I use these mainly for denibbing finishes. The next shelf down is where I'm going to store rolls of sandpaper. These are the ones I use most often when sanding by hand which are 180 grit and it just works out cheaper to buy them by the roll. And the bottom shelf is for the sander itself. Finally I add some of the accessories to the side panel like this spanner for changing over the backing pad and the backing pad itself. I think this is going to work really well for me and the project only took a couple of hours to put together. It's really nice to tick off a few of these workshop projects ever so often that have been on my to-do list for so long. I wouldn't recommend using the 9mm sheet material that I used in this video though. The main reason I used it is to use up some scraps but also because I knew that the bottom shelf where the sander sits was going to be supported by that bottom rail of the frame of my workbench. So it'll hold the weight of the sander no problem. But if I was mounting one of these to a wall rather than inside a workbench panel then 12mm sheet material would be plenty strong enough to support the weight of the sander. If you're thinking of making one of these you might also want to add a back panel to the unit if it's going to be wall mounted. That will add more rigidity and it will also give you more options for mounting it to the wall. You could either use some cabinet mounting hardware for that 
or you could make French cleats to mount it or just simply screw it on. This unit is obviously nothing fancy and that's just how I like my workshop projects to be honest. They just need to work, they don't need to look perfect. And a reminder again that free plans and a cut list for this project are at a link in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that via PayPal or Patreon. Links to those are in the description box below. And on Patreon, you can get early access to my new videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching.